right, we're going to look at power series. Uh, you should have read a little bit about them already. And what we're really focusing on is when do these power series uh, converge. The terminology that we use with that is what is the radius of convergence. And the radius of convergence is just how far we can stray from the center of our power series and still have convergence. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to see here what the center is, but in this case, because I'm not subtracting anything from x, the center is zero. Uh, and the next example will be a little bit more apparent. All right, so we're going to use the ratio test. Whenever we're trying to determine the radius of convergence, the ratio test comes into play. Remember, the ratio test says take a term and divide it by the previous term and look to see what that approaches. If that approaches a number less than 1, then the series converges. And that's what we're going to take advantage of. All right, so we're going to do the ratio test. We take our um, original sequence, throw that in the denominator. In the numerator, we throw in the next term of the sequence. So we replace all of our n's by n plus 1. This is going to become a rather um, familiar maneuver. We're dividing a fraction by a fraction. So you take the denominator, take its reciprocal, n factorial over n, radical n x to the n, and leave the numerator alone. And so we end up with this quantity. And now we simplify. The way we simplify is we gather things that are like. So for instance, we have the square root of n plus 1 and the square root of n. We'll gather those two together. Um, we have n plus n or n factorial in the numerator, n plus 1 factorial in the denominator. n plus 1 factorial is really n plus 1 times n factorial. So that will reduce to just n plus 1 in the denominator. And finally, um, the x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n in absolute value just reduces the absolute value of x. Okay, so that n1 over n plus 1 came from reducing the factorials, and there we have that square root. Now we let n go to infinity. n plus 1 over n will approach 1. You could use L'Hopital's rule for a little bit of overkill, or just recognize that in the long run, that 1 is really negligible. We would have n over n, which reduces to 1. This term goes to 0, one, or this factor, 1 over n plus 1 goes to 0, because n is exploding. And then we have the absolute value of x. Now we imagine that x is a fixed constant value. For a fixed constant value of x, if this quantity is approaching 0, we're going to end up with a 0 overall. Now let's go back to the ratio test. The ratio test said if our limit is less than 1, then the series converges. So for which values of x is this limit less than 1? Well, x got washed out by the limit, and so any x value will um, have this series converging. When that happens, we say the radius of convergence is infinity, because I can stray as far as I want from x equals 0. Okay. So for our, for our second example here, we get something a little bit more complex. Not only do we want the radius of convergence, we also want the interval of convergence. Our series is a power series centered at a equals 2. How do I know it's centered at a equals 2? Because I take what I'm raising to the nth power here, x minus 2, and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. x or x minus 2, set it equal to 0 and solve for x. x minus 2 equals 0 means that x equals 2. So this is a power series centered at 2. Again, the radius of convergence will tell us how far x can stray from 2 and still give us a convergent series. Again, the ratio test. I now I'll simplify things a little more quickly. Uh, off here on the right, I have the reciprocal of my original series, a sequence, that is. It's the, the reciprocal of that because we really divided by our original sequence. Over here we have the sequence and the n plus first term. Okay. Again, I collect the things that are similar. Um, notice that negative 2 to the n plus 1 divided by negative 2 to the n would reduce to negative 2, but because we're doing absolute values, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Our rational function in n, 3n plus 1, divided by the quantity, or divided by 3 times the quantity n plus 1 plus 1, becomes this term. And then our powers of x minus 2 just reduce to the absolute value of x minus 2 n goes to infinity, this rational function approaches 3n over 3n, or well, 3 over 3, which is just 1. 
So we have 2 times 1 times that. Now we have a little bit more algebra to work with. We want this quantity to be uh, less than 1. So we set it less than 1. And solve for x minus our center in absolute value. Well, our center was 2. We're solving for the absolute value of x minus 2, and we get less than 1 half, which means our radius of convergence is 1 half. What that means is I can stray one half of a unit from x equals two, and I'll still be convergent. Now, if we want to do some old time algebra, absolute value less than one half means that what's inside the absolute value, the x minus two, will still be less than one half, but greater than the opposite of one half, one half, which is negative one half. Adding two to both sides will end up with negative one half plus two, which is three halves, and two plus one half, which is five halves. Now remember I said the radius of convergence is how far we can stray from our center and still be convergent. Our center is 2, I can go 1 half more than 2, that's 5 halves, or 1 half less than 2, that's 3 halves. To find the interval of convergence, I need to determine whether or not I converge at 3 halves and at 5 halves. So we'll check 3 halves first. Sometimes we might converge at 1, sometimes we might converge at both, or we may not converge at either. When x is 3 halves, we replace x up here by 3 halves. We end up three, with 3 halves minus 2, which is negative 1 half. Negative 2 to the n times negative 1 half to the n reduces to 1 to the n, which is just 1. The denominator does not change. So now I want to know, does this converge or diverge? Well, again, it's a rational function. We kind of know how to handle them. Let's drop off the 1 just to get a sense for what this is going to behave like. If I drop off the 1, I end up with 1 over 3n. Well, let's worry, not worry about the 3. I have 1 over n. Does the series of 1 over n converge or diverge? Well, it's a famous one. It's the harmonic series, which we know diverges. You could also use the p-test, the p-series test, which says that if the power is greater than or, or less than or equal to 1, it's going to diverge. So we have to make that a convincing argument. Now, I have to be very careful. It, um, I cannot just drop off this negative 1 and work with that. Here's why. I need to find a series that diverges that whose terms are less than 1 over 3n plus 1. Again, I need to find a series that diverges whose terms are less than 1 over 3n plus 1. If I drop off the plus 1, that makes my denominator smaller, which makes my fraction bigger. Okay, So 1 over 3n is going to be larger than this one, which doesn't help me. So one of our standard uh, maneuvers is to replace lower terms by the highest term there. So I'm going to replace 1 by n. Now I have to be very, very precise. Um, if I just did that and let n go from 0 to infinity, I would have 4 times 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. So I don't want to do that. I pulled off the very first term there. So that very first term, if you let n be 0, you get 1 over 3 times 0 plus 1. That's the very first term. Thereafter, though, I can do this maneuver just fine. So I replace 1 by n. That makes my denominator grow. If my denominator gets bigger, my fraction gets smaller. So this series is greater than, if you follow all the signs, well, that's going to be 4n in the denominator, pull out the 1 fourth. It's going to be greater than the harmonic series, which we know diverges. Since it diverges, so does this, and so therefore the sequence diverges at x equals 3 halves. Oh, what about 5 halves? 5 halves is actually kind of fun, because 5 halves minus 2 is going to be 1 half to the n times negative 2 to the n, leaves us with negative 1 to the n. Now this is a different beast altogether. When I see a negative 1 to the nth, I get excited because I think it's an alternating series. To be an alternating series, two things have to happen. When I drop the absolute, or when I take the absolute value of this, that is drop the negative 1 to the n, I have to form a decreasing sequence. Also, that decreasing sequence needs to decrease to 0. Okay, well, 1 over 3n plus 1, as n gets larger, this gets smaller. So it's decreasing. And as n gets larger, the denominator is very, very large, the numerator is 1, it's going to approach 0. So this one converges. 
it converges at 5 halves, it diverges at 3 halves, and so our radius or interval of convergence is going to be the interval from 3 halves to 5 halves, but including 5 halves.